Is that really what happened, Jeeves? I think we may have simplified it slightly, sir. Good Lord. Any sign of that banjo? Not yet, sir. Oh. Better stick with the narrative then, eh? Advisable, sir. Yeah. Think they're following it? This lot? Impossible to tell, sir. Uh. <laughs> well, see if they're still here when we come back, eh? An excellent suggestion, sir. An acid test. Care for a quick one? Perhaps a small tonic wine, sir. My treat, Jeeves. Thank you, sir. good still here <laughs> most of them uh, what news of the Kentish banjo Jeeves yeah, the driver has just telephoned it is on its way sir. splendid any moment now then eh, Jeeves any sir in the meantime I suppose we had better resume our tale and so we shall <laughs> where were we may I sir? yes of course we resume the narrative a few moments later we are still in the grounds of Totley Towers. It is 9.45 p.m. <laughs> Sir Watkin Bassett has retired to the house, somewhat confused by the varying identity of many of his guests. If you will recall, the real Mr. Finknottle was masquerading as Mr. Wooster, oh. whilst the real Mr. Wooster was masquerading as Mr. Little. <laughs> Miss Glossop had gone indoors to change following her walk with Mr. Little, <gasps> now known as Mr. Finknottle. <gasps> Meanwhile, Mr. Cyrus Bunch III, Junior, uh, Junior, had taken advantage of the confusion to take Miss Bassett for a walk in the Rose Garden. The bounder. And Stiffy, I never feel easy unless I know where she is. I understand she is presently collecting the Reverend Mr. Pinker from the station, sir. Off the last train. He was due to arrive earlier on the 526, but there was some slight <coughs> accident. Accident? The Reverend Mr. Pinker boarded the train at Paddington, slammed the door rather too hard, and derailed it, sir. <laughs> Sounds probable. And me, where was I? More or less where you're standing now, sir. In animated discussion with Mr. Fink Nottle, currently Mr. Wooster, and Mr. Little, currently... Yes, that will do, Jeeves. But I wish you'd both stop claiming this was my fault. Who else's? If you and Madeline hadn't concocted this half-witted scheme, Bingo and I would have been happy about our business. Nobody which... asked you down here, did they? Let's just say I had an offer it was very hard to say no to. Don't try and evade things. I know why you came, Bertie. There's no need to lie. I came because of Stiffy. She went and put this announcement Don't in the time. Don't lie to me, Bertie. I know why you came. You came because of Honoria. I... Honoria? She told me just now. Honoria? While we were walking up from the village. That's why she came to see me at the hotel. So she could tell me in person. God, she's so considerate. Tell you what? That she... That she'd realized she'd made a terrible mistake. That you were the only man she could ever love. Damn you. That as soon as she saw you arriving like a knight in armor, her words, not mine, snake in... sheep's clothing. <laughs> would be nearer the mark. That as soon as she saw you, she vowed never to let you go again. Oh, grief. She apologized to me for any false hope she may have aroused and if that wasn't enough she then said the worst thing she could possibly say she said she hoped we could both stay friends <laughs> oh listen this is appalling i had no idea i mean it was pure coincidence meeting oh, Bertie. a hmm? <laughs> don't <laughs> don't insult me please Credit me with a modicum of intelligence. As an ex-friend, you might at least do that. This is absurd. Gussie, talk to him. Talk to him? Why should I talk to him? I'm not even talking to you. 
Thanks to you, I may have lost Madeline forever. She... What is... She has gone off somewhere with Budge. I'll be lucky ever to see her again. Oh, don't be so ridiculous. Madeline would never go off with Budge. Not when she has you. What? Spend the rest of her life talking jam? She knows which side her bread's buttered. Don't you worry. She's not that stupid. Yes, I see what you mean. I am never speaking to you again, Betty, and that's it. Nor am I. Oh, terrific. Right, I see. Well, be like that. See if I care. At this point, we appear to have run out of narrative. <laughs> uh, Jeeves. Yes, sir. Ah, I, I think the story's in need of a, what do you call those things? Deus ex machina, sir. Sounds like the chap. Uh, any chance of one turning up shortly? Only uh... one about to arrive, sir. Thank heavens for that. Who? Me, sir. You? Re-entering the narrative, you mean? If I may be permitted, sir. Oh yes, of course. Just the chap. Uh, where are you going? To make an entrance, sir. Oh, absolutely. Carry on. There you are. You see. It is patently clear any awkwardness here can be cleared up in less than a trice. Our identities switch, who is who, which is which, we're in need of some solid advice. There's a painfully simple solution, it's as plain as the nose on your face. By gang, by gosh, by heck, by gum, by rabbit's foot, by kingdom come, by all my sainted aunt believes, by George, by Joe, by Jeeves. When we're faced with the grind of exerting the mind, we are filled with a deep sense of dread. How on earth, I hear cries, does one give exercise to a thing that's in bed in your head? What we need is a free-range consultant. Where on earth do you find one of those? By hook, by crook, by way, by pass, by sea, by air, by road, by grass, by seven dwarfs, by forty thieves, by George, by Joe, by Jeeves, by shuttlecock, by croquet hoop, by Panama, by Windsor soup, by all those cards tucked up his sleeves, by George, by Joe, by Jeeves. A collective IQ of around 42 Cannot cope to be perfectly frank All true leaders of men delegate now and then Try to keep their minds totally blank To appreciate loftier matters Things that mostly go over my head by Darby Day, by Nursery Tea, by Moose, by Spoons, by Half Past Three, by every tender breast that he, by George, by Joe, by Jeeves, by Marmalade, by Bowler Hat, by Toothpaste Tube, by Burmese Cat, by Baby Newton, by Autumn Leaves, by George, by Joe, by Jeeves. Behold how Jeeves, with sleight of hand, conceives a scheme so carefully planned. Even we can understand if he takes it terribly slowly. By basing stone, by cardboard box, by Budge's knees, by Bassett's socks, by each that conjurer deceives, by George, by Joe, by Jeeves, by jumping. By Easy Chair, by Van Marie, by Camembert, by every fruit bat in the eaves, by George, by Joe, by Jeeves, by walking boots, by thermal drawers, by canopies, by Santa Claus, by all his mighty brain achieves, by every spell the master weaves. By heck, by George, by Joe, by Jeeves, by Jeeves, by Jeeves, by Jeeves, by Jeeves. One more time, one more time around. Yes. Good evening, sir. Ah, Jeeves. Jeeves. What a surprise. Is there a problem, sir? Yes, 
I'll tell you everything. I told him. I see, sir. Well? Well, what's the answer, Jeeves? I'm afraid I could not say, sir. Can't say? I see no immediate solution, not at present. No? You don't? I regret not, sir. Jeeves? Will you excuse me, sir? I must unpack. Well, what on earth got into him? He's usually infallible. Well, it only goes to prove what I've been saying for years. The man is obviously past his perishable shelf life. Completely shot. And the sooner we put him out to graze, the sooner we... Ah, Jeeves. A note, sir. Ah, thank you, Jeeves. From Miss Glossop, sir. You swine, buddy! Oh, yes, thank you, Jeeves. Uh, this will be the... Uh, I'm almost certain. She offered to share the cost of the petrol for the lift I gave her earlier. I said I wouldn't hear of it, but she insisted, you know. I read the note swiftly. Ah, yes, petrol. Dear Betty, I must see you urgently, my darling. Come to my room ASAP. Oh, my love, Honoria. Kiss, kiss, kiss. I heard that. All right, sorry. <laughs> what was all that, Jeeves? Merely a stage convention, sir. Well, that's quite enough of them, no more. It's nothing private. You! Swine, Bertie, I'm going to drown myself. <laughs> See that? <laughs> oh. Maddie! Maddie, baby, hey! What did I say this time? I don't understand the dame. One minute it's come for a walk I want to be with you. The next I put an arm around her and she's telling you, me to you puzzle. You put an arm around her. Arm her round put. Yeah, so? How? How? How daring! What? I'm... Oh, I'm going to budge you, Box. I threaten you to some fits, do you hear me, for Madeline? All right, I don't care. What? <laughs> you want to fight me? Is that it? Yes, you! 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 Betcha! <laughs> for Maddie? Oh. Are you joking? You wouldn't stand a chance. Do you know how fit I am? Do you know how fit? Well, you, you, you're fit for nothing, you, you lecturing jam pot! <laughs> right. You want a fight? You got yourself a fight. Midnight, mister, right here. And I'd bring a couple stretcher bears if I were you. You're gonna need them. Uh, what? Oh! Ha ha. An ugly turn, Jeeves. Distinctly unattractive, sir. Gussie, Gussie, old pal, don't you... Oh. Oh. Don't you think you ought to reconsider this a bit? Oh, I mean, go if you were to... away, Bertie. Just go away. This is all your fault. Every single bit of it. Go away. This is getting like the fourth act of Medea, Jeeves. There is a certain air of tragedy, isn't huh? <sighs> Stygian gloom forlorn, Jeeves. Indeed. Is there any way of patching things up? With Miss Glossop and Mr. Little, the problem is complicated by the fact that whilst Mr. Little undoubtedly harbors strong feelings towards Miss Glossop, I gather they are not reciprocated. Ah, the old unrequited bit. Whereas with Miss Bassett and Mr. Fignottle, I think the problem there is that Miss Bassett has grown increasingly impatient with Mr. Fignottle and his apparent inability to declare his true feelings. She, as a result, has resorted to the age-old but somewhat unreliable device of trying to expedite matters through jealousy. I see. So, Cyrus is merely a stalking horse. That is my understanding, sir. Though one with a dangerous kick, if mishandled. Absolutely. Not a chap to enter for the dressage. Ooh, hardly, sir. I would therefore suggest... Yes, carry on, Jeeves. I am all attention. I would suggest that it is time you intervened personally. Me? Yes, sir. How? By communicating Mr. Finknottle's true feelings to Miss Bassett. Think she'll listen? I'm sure she will, sir. It is, after all, a message she wishes to hear. Oh, good point. This is obviously a case which needs some, uh, what shall I say, expertise, tact? Savoir-faire? Exactly. Ambassadorial skills to the fore, eh, Jeeves? 
Assume the time-honored role of love's messenger. Serrano de Bergerac, sir. Thank you, Jeeves. I shall need it. <laughs> right, which way? Behold, here she comes.